I'm going to speak about what the Bible says about being poor. Now, first of all, there are so many Bible references in Scripture, we can't cover it all. And I have a list here of where we find the word poor in the Bible. And we're going to look at it. We're going to study it. And we're going to get off the world misconception. In John 12, verse 8, Jesus speaking, as you can see on the screen, or your Bible, red letter, <clears throat> For the poor always ye have with you, but ye have not, but me ye have not always. Jesus, who is God, who made man, said, you're not going to get rid of the poor. Now, one statement to be fact is, when the Antichrist comes, whether before his power or in his power, we will be in a worldwide socialism. Socialism is the government ways of the Antichrist. Well, thank God the church will be gone. I will be gone. And under the Antichrist, you will have two classes of people. There will be no middle class. They will be the rich, which the book of James rebukes much. And you're going to have the poor. I don't know as far as the millennium with poor. But Jesus said you'll always have the poor with you. The only time you will not have the poor is the new heavens, the new earth, or new Jerusalem. That's it. But think about it. The fact is, we move me over here a little bit. Wholly destitute without property, or not having property, sufficient for a comfortable substance, needy. That's Webster's 1828 Dictionary. That's the people in hell. The people of hell are needy. They have no water. They have no comfort. They have no health insurance. They have no medic. They have nothing but torment. They don't even have God. They have no one they can pray to. That's someone who's poor. And it is Beyond their capability to get help. A person in the street today can get help. A person in the street could buy a dollar ticket and, and win a fortune. A person living on the street could find out a loved one died and in a will. There have been multiple stories of people who were on the street. They worked. They studied. They made themselves something. Most of the early immigrants that came into America through Ellis Island built themselves up. Without welfare, without SNAP, without Section 8. Okay, we're going to work backwards. Revelation 13. Under the Antichrist, he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, no middle class, free and bond. There are poor people, and then there are people in bond to receive the mark in their right hand or their left hand, left, or their foreheads, left foreheads. So receiving the mark of the beast doesn't make you rich. You're still poor. And there's no middle class. You will see maybe in the church age or after the church age. But there will come a time under the Antichrist. The middle class will be gone. You'll be rich or you'll be the, the peasants. Plain and simple. Revelation 3. Seventeen. This is the church. This is the lie of the seeing church age. Because thou said you know, the church says I've seen it. I am rich. Look at our property. Look at how many people we got. 
Look at our fellowship hall. Increase with goods. Look at all the stuff we got. Look at all the hymnals. Look at all the people in the choir. Look at all the kids that came from BBS. Look at all our property. And have need of nothing. We don't need nothing. We don't need to pray to God. We're great. We're financial. Oh. I was watching the Queen's funeral yesterday. I can imagine that, that, that cathedral, whether St. George. I'm looking at that. That place was huge. You know, I'm looking at that. You know, you know when I see big places like that, and there's a Baptist church, well, we can't afford the, the AC and all that. Your building's too big. You got this big high ceiling. You don't need that big high ceiling. But God says, knowest, that, knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. The Laodicean church age, that's this church age present. They think they're rich. But God says you're poor. The Christians in this period of time is poor. James 2 5. James is written to the 12 tribes of Israel. James seems to be a, a part tribulation book that attacks and rebukes. The rich people. And it seems like when you do a Bible study, those that are in rich in the tribulation period are those that receive the mark. Yes, you can receive the mark and still be poor. But you cannot be rich and not have the mark because you cannot do any business without the mark. But James 2 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Has God has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? The heirs of kingdom which he has promised unto them that love him. You look at majority of those that you know by name in the church history. And there were rich ones like Paul. Paul was rich. Paul was educated. But then, you know, you, you had four fishermen. You had a tax collector. And you look at the biographies. George Mueller, say, with an orphanage, would sit at the table of the children and he had no food. And the only resource he had was not to open his wallet, but to open his prayer life. And the remarkable ways that God answered that man's prayer. You are, and I, I have been public evangelism many different ways. You're going to find the poor will listen to you more of the gospel than the rich. But then again, you get those who, who are homeless and drunks and druggies. They won't listen to you. They want you to throw money at them. And they get mad when you don't. Believe me, listen, I'm a street preacher. And you will find an educated, well-off person pays their bills and, and they will listen. God uses the poor. Galatians 2.10 Only they would have yeah, only they would that we should remember the poor the same which I also forward to do. A Christian is not to despise 
and disregard a poor person. Especially one that's in your church. Now, when dealing with the poor in charity and giving, you have got to be wise and prudent. And I'm talking about this, this lesson of poor. You don't go running out and throwing your money to the poor people. Of all the people I helped, or came across, Asked me money and dealt with in the public ministry. I have only twice. No. Once. I'm going to say one or two. Given money. So someone's come up to me and asked me money. I have gone and bought meals. Some way, shape, and form. I'm not bragging, please, Lord. Let me not lose my, my rewards in heaven. But I, I, I'm illustrating. Instead of giving money, they had told me they were hungry. I have gone into and bought them a meal. I I, I bought one guy a meal. He said, this guy was fat. He's like, I'm in a dream. And you could tell, I'm in a dream world. And I gave him a gospel track to read because I had things to, I had to go. And he ended up taking a whole bunch of And when I left that guy with a meal, he had a meal. He had a drink. Maybe a dessert. I don't know. I forget. He figured this guy was so hungry. When I left and, and I walked to the door, the glass door, and I went to shut the door and I turned open the other door, I saw that man sitting in the seat reading the gospel trap. I had someone else, I was, I was at a convenience store and I had given, I, I worked I worked for the newspaper so I knew the, 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 the convenience store cashiers and all that. And I, I had, I don't carry money, I just have to have money today. I gave the guy money. I said, listen, let her get herself a sandwich, a drink, no cigarettes, no alcohol, food. And if she gets anything more, I'll and pay for it. And the guy said, no, no. I'll, if she goes over, I'll take care of it. And the guy was, I can't believe it, you're helping this woman. Okay? Don't go throwing your money out all we had one guy, we were at a place of public witnessing. And some people brought him some fruit. He was homeless, sitting there, he had a little tray for money. And when those people drove away, my wife seen him take the, the fruit and throw it off in the bushes. He didn't do that with the money. We got two in Daytona Beach, Florida. We got one guy who holds a sign and says, why lie? I need a beer. And he gets money. We got another guy, why lie? I need drugs. He gets money. I dealt with a guy outside one of your famous store. <coughs> that guy bragged how he doesn't have to pay taxes. That guy bragged on how much he gets. By standing there with a the sign. you got to be careful. On who you gave your money. Now when you're in church. And you're about to give somebody money. I would ask the pastor. If that party you are about to help. Are responsible. Don't come. Somebody come into church. And oh I need money. Don't be so freely. They, I, I'm sorry. Because you know what? Just because you say you have a need doesn't mean you have a need. You got to be smart. People are slick. They have caught these homeless people asking for money. They have followed them with a camera and they walk over two or three blocks and they're driving a brand new car and they take off their clothes and they got fine threads. But also, I'm saying is. 
don't forget the poor. And you know a surety if somebody in your church or somebody in the street really has a need and God has laid on your heart to help that person, don't walk away. Help. Especially missionaries. Sometimes a pastor of a church will get up and say, listen, this family and this person, we had that in one church. The guy was going homeless, and, you know, and and the pastor said, "This guy's out playing golf. You know how much it costs to go play around the golf I'm like, I didn't. Well, you're not you're not getting help though from me, okay? But 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 the Bible says, remember, if they are truly needy." Without the means. And they're not going to waste it. Don't hand out money to people on the street right away. Now let, let me tell you something too. Be very, very careful. Let, let me tell you what's happened in life. I'll go in the store. Oh look, a little package of donuts. And a, and a soda. And you buy that little package of donuts and you get them the soda. You hand it to them. Thank you very much. You get in your car and you drive away. They walk into that store and say, I just bought this coffee and donuts. And, nah. They get a refund and they buy their cigarettes or their other junk. Be careful because they will take what you give thinking you are doing them service. I one guy offered me money. I says, and there was a convenience store. I said, I'll get you something to eat. You want to? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I said, come on. I said, I said anybody? And he walked away. He, he didn't want money. I mean, he didn't want food. He didn't want, he wanted money to go buy drugs. He wanted money to go buy alcohol. He wanted money to go buy sex. Whatever he's going to do with that money. He ain't going to do it for food. You gotta be careful. You gotta be slick. Because they're slick. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians nine nine. As is written, he that disperses abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness remains with him. One of the things for a Christian is if God truly puts a true poor person into your path, you're to help them. You say, Stanley, have you done Yeah, I've done it. I've done it where nobody knows that what I've done. And I've gone up to church officials People holding an office in the church, and I get them. I say, "Here, give this to such and such." And I have put money in an envelope. Sometimes my name on it. Sometimes without my name. This goes to this family. Sometimes I. Sometimes right on it, electric bill, clothes for the children, food. You know, when you write a check. You put in that memo what that check is to be used for. If they don't use it for what you write in the memo, they're, they're breaking the law. God will, will put poor people in front of you. And the devil will put poor people in front of you. It's hard. You want to help everybody. <coughs> Forgive me for talking. Listen, when you've been a street preacher, you met everybody. But you got to be careful. Chapter 8, verse 9. I don't know how much we're going to get. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich in heaven, all the riches of heaven, 
Yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Jesus Christ left the heavenly throne and was born in an animal's manger. Jesus had nowhere to lay his head, he said. The Bible says everybody went to his house and Jesus went to a mountain. When the, when the soldiers gambled away the clothes of Jesus, the the uh, uh, the robe and the that was it. That's all he had. God, the Almighty God, with all the angels, the seraphims, and the cherubim, and all the riches that all he's got to do is speak into his all that he left all that and became poor. I don't care what the pictures paint Jesus as. He was poor on this earth. And then we are rich through Jesus. Maybe not in this earth, in this world, but you wait till we get the glory. And if you have lived right for Jesus, you have done well done. There's silver, gold, precious stones, and crowns. That will be absent from hell. And it will be absent from the worldly carnal Christians who've done nothing. You read the descriptions of the Bible, what God's throne is like? I wonder. First Corinthians. Thirteen. <coughs> Pardon me for coughing. My throat. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me less. Nothing. Don't give because you're forced to give. Don't sign any pledges. Don't have any faith giving, keeping, whatever they call it. But especially, I don't know one church, especially the pledges. Another church I, I've heard when I went to the seminary that the people left the church and, they, and while they were in the church they signed a pledge. They left the church and the church took them to court. And the court obligated them for that pledge, even though they weren't members of that church no more. If anybody, your pastor, anybody forces you to give money, especially to the poor, and you don't want to give it, and you're not lovingly doing it, Don't do it. For God loves a cheerful giver. If you're going to give money to a poor person and you're just giving it, just get out of my way. Come on. Don't give it. That would be a sin. We had somebody, and listen, Lord God, I hope I, I ain't losing my rewards in heaven. I don't want to brag. We had a situation with a woman. I'm not going to go all into it. And, and just say, Lord said, help us. And she needed a ride back. The car broke down. When we got to the car, her husband, I assume, was under the hood trying to fix it. And there were three kids in the back seat, all wrapped up in blankets. We gave her money. We had food in the car. And gospel tracks the Lord. It burned our heart to see that. And I don't want to get into it. And my wife asked me after that. She says, Honey, do you think angels are women? I said, no, there's no woman angel in the Bible. 
Because he's like, entertain angels unawares. He just said, she said, there, there was this something about that situation that seemed unreal. And that event was written down in the heavenly books. I, Lord, I don't want to lose. I don't want to brag. I'm not bragging. I'm hopefully illustration. I want to be careful. I don't want to blow a trumpet. Look what I did. Romans 15, 26. For it pleased them of Macedonia and Caia to make a certain contribution for the four saints which are at Jerusalem. There you go. This is the missionary church helping the home church. Jerusalem was the home church. They were going poor because Jews were turning to Christ. That was forbidden. <coughs> and I want to reverse it to say, when you send out missionaries, you are helping the poor. As the case is recently. I don't want to talk about it. But I support missionaries in countries where they are poor and needy. I support missionaries, yeah, to get the gospel out. And also, there, there may be a, a Christian there, there may be someone there who has a need of something. That hopefully the money I give can help the missionary to help that person in the name of Jesus Christ. When you give money, and I'm, this is written for me too right now. When you give money to a missionary, don't let your prayers be over oh, the win lost soul. No, don't 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 put don't put a memo line on your check. Say, Lord God, this money, this is for me too. Lord God, this money I'm giving to this missionary, whatever you can do to bless somebody. For the name and the glory and the honor of your son, Jesus Christ. It may not be for salvation. It may be a plate of rice. Medication. I don't know. But if you're supporting a missionary in a, in a poor, third world kind of country setting, well, you're helping the poor saints. That pleases God. Luke 18. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said, Yet thou lackest one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute to the poor. It's almost like what we just read in Corinthians. And thou shalt have treasures in heaven. Come and follow me. Now, this is salvation by works. Jesus Christ has not gone to the cross and died and suffered and buried and rose again. But this can also be for the Christian after salvation. You know, the dead Christian that has all these treasures and all this money, all the savings, <coughs> all the doodads, is just as bad as the, uh, the lost man with all the money and all the savings and all the doodads. It don't do you no good in your coffin. When you don't have a record in heaven of giving. You can give to the church. And you're supposed to. That's a whole nother lesson. You can give to missionaries. It's proper. I advise it. 
And when you give to missionaries, you may be helping poor. Most countries there, you are. And also, you are to help the poor in the church. Yes, you can help the poor on the streets, or in your neighborhood, or your co whoever you know. But use prudence, use wisdom, assure of their poor condition. That is not deceit. I will not give money. I people come up to me. They got a pack of cigarettes, a beer in their hand, they got all the tattoos. They go, oh, money. And they got a, no. How much money did you waste on those tattoos? How can I not be assured of what money I give you? You're not going to go get another tattoo. What's that cigarette in your hand? Your children can't eat the tobacco. We, you, you quit the smoking. Oh, it's hard. If you really love your children, I know smoking is, is hard to quit. I used to smoke. What's that Budweiser doing in your hand? Don't come to me with tattoos and, and, and alcohol and tobacco. I'm out of my luck. I ain't got no food. I ain't got. No food. Well, you got two things right there you can get rid of, and don't get. It, it makes me sick. I, I I think with the with the SNAP and the welfare system, I think they should look at some of these people. They got tattoos. All right, you're disqualified. Are you against tattoos? No. Uh, it's a Bible says no, but no, I'm not against tattoos. But when my tax dollars are paying for you and you're getting tattoos that you can't afford nothing. Don't tell me, I, 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 many of my family members were on welfare and the things they got. All right, don't get me going on that. Luke 14. Luke 14, 13. But when thou makest a feast, Call the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. That's my cat. Yeah. Have you ever, there are poor people in your church. Have you ever gone up to them and said, Come over to our house, have a dinner. We're going to have dinner. Come on over to our house. Or, hey, you know what? It's your wife and your kids. Yeah. You doing anything after church? No. You come with my family and we're going to go out to eat. What kind of food do you like? What restaurant do you like? It says a feast, a meal. Uh, you know, I gave the guy, a, uh, I got him a sandwich. Have you sat down with them with a meal and you know, talked to them? A lot of times they may want a friend to talk to. They may need some godly advice that God maybe has given you. Zechariah 7. Zechariah 7, 10. Oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. Let none of you imagine evil against his brother in his heart. Now Ezekiel 22. The people of the land have used oppression, exercised robbery, 
have vexed the poor and needy yet and have oppressed the stranger wrongly. That's what the government's doing. Someone needs to tell the Democrats they're, they're always going to be poor. We read that in John 12, 12 8. The Democrats with their socialism and their communism, we're going to tax the rich. You will always, Jesus said, you will always have the poor. Now, on the other hand, you take the poor and you overtax them. You take the middle class and you, you use a theft called inflation. And you raise the prices so the rich can get richer and richer. And the middle class and the poor can get poorer and poorer. That's what that is. It's politics. And you pass more laws and taxes and regulations and statutes and fees and licenses. You give the landlord much more rights than the tenant. Nothing makes me matter to say if you spent one day in the, uh, the first day in the month, you're going to be charged all the days of the month. In your rent. No, you prorate. <clears throat> and I believe, you know, if, if, if by chance, by accident, you stayed the 1st of September, accidentally, and you get billed for all of September, I don't care what you pay for. You're going to stand before God, you're going to be a thief. Because you can prorate. I mean, after all, we just had a U United States president who's a landlord. Of course he's going to stick up for his own kind and his kind who bankrupt his company three or four times. I forget how many. God is proclaiming you do not put the vice on the poor and the middle class. That's against the Bible in a Christian nation. That's what kings and queens do to the, the servants, the peasants. You know, we left England because the tax of tea. You know what you're taxed on now today? Practically everything. How come we don't take the gasoline and throw it over in the river or the bay like they did with the tea and fight the government? And no, if we took everything that was taxed by our U.S. government and threw it in the ocean or the bay like they threw the tea over, Ezekiel 16, 49. Behold, this is the iniquity of Sister Sodom. Oh, yeah, there were Sodomites, they were, they were men and men, they were gay, they were lesbians. All right, let's see. Pride. That's America. Fullness of bread. That was America. We're losing that. I worked for a couple of restaurants and I worked for grocery stores. If you knew how much is put into the dumpster. If you knew how much New York City restaurants throw out in the dumpster. Food. The abundance of idleness. It was in her. That's America. That's America. And her daughters. City. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. That's America coming up. 
when America turns her back on the poor, and I think it's going to be after this immigration thing, you know, where they're busting them to Chicago, Washington, D.C., Martha's Vineyard, and I think it's going to get to a point that they're going to say, that's it, we're not helping nobody. When we, when we get to that point, we are as Sodom. Then you go ahead and have men having sex with men, and women having sex with women, and bestiality. Um, let's try some of the Proverbs. I don't want it really to be long, but Proverbs 10.4. He becometh poor that deals with a slack hand. He's not going to work. You're not going to labor. And you're going to be lazy. My parents owned a, a three apartment house where we, we had the middle floor. We had a family that they're just known, the whole entire family was welfare. I won't tell you the name. Oh, the grandpa, the father, all the children, and the children's children. They were all welfare. And they didn't do nothing. And I know another family. The guy slept all day, all day. I'm not talking about hell. There's a pastor man, oh, no, you don't work and all that. I've got a legitimate uh, disability. I've got the people trying to find me jobs and look at me like, this is going to be hard. But they're trying. Fourteen twenty. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor. I mean, there are comedians out there that make fun of that one poor uncle. There are people in your church who are poor and they're hated by some of the congregation. What about you? You help them? You gave them a meal? Did you invite them to go have a meal? Or do you hate them, talk about them, and don't want anything to do with them? We've read already, God says, help them. He that despises his neighbor, sin him. If you despise that poor man, you sin. But he that has mercy on the poor, on the poor Happy is he. You know, maybe why you're not so happy in your Christian life is maybe you're not helping somebody who's less off than you are. Thirty-one. He that oppresses the poor, we just read that in Ezekiel and uh, Zacharias, reproaches his maker. But he that honors him has mercy on the poor. If you want to please God, help the poor. And there's nothing better to help the poor take on a missionary. Two. Three, put some money in the envelope, write down for this family, put it in the plate, the collection plate, or box, whatever you have, without your name. You, if your church is right, and it probably is, they will take that envelope and they will hand it to the family. I had one church, and I wanted to help the family. And the pastor's like, I said, what if I give this money 
or I go, and we got uh, those little the, the the cash cards. This grocery store cash cash card. And the pastor said, "Okay, that's a good idea." And with those cash cards, you can buy cigarettes. What do you think about that? I heard about a church one time. Somebody putting that note in the t in the check for groceries for this family. I heard that the pastor's wife took that family to the grocery store with that money and made sure they got groceries and not foolishness. That's a smart pastor. 17.5. You got to be smart in your giving, but you can't be, you know, I'm not going to help anybody. Whoso mocketh the poor, comedians, the rich of the church, reproaches his maker, that's God. Now, I say anything about welfare and stuff like that, but I am very sentimental when it comes to a single mother. Whatever the, the husband, whatever reason, or a widow woman with children, I think she deserves Section A. I think she deserves welfare. I, I believe she deserves SNAP to help her. Now, if she's committed adultery and broke her marriage, I don't think she gets the children. That's a whole other story. But if a woman, whatever reason, or a man, they are alone, raising children, trying to do right, they have one or two jobs, I think they ought to get the help. There are people on the welfare system, on the SNAP system, on uh, uh, Social Security Disability, they need to be taken off. God will hold you. God will hold the United States and every government with what you do with the taxpayer's money. That's a whole other lesson. Chapter 19. Four. But the poor is separated by his name. Again, don't separate yourself because they're poor. It's a sin. Befriend them. Maybe you know, they got you. Maybe go to the store and get her a little doll. You know, you can go to the dollar. We've done that. You go to the dollar store and you get a two dollar at a dollar store doll. I, I always got the little fluffy ones, you know. I didn't get the, you know, the Barbies and all that. I get them, and, and, you, and I've seen that child take, and the, their eyes light up, and I ask the parents, can, can I? And you just see that child just loving it. And that, and that child will bring that toy, that doll, stuffed animal, whatever. They will bring them to church next week. I, I, I seen, she, she brought it back, it was like the third or fourth week. She sat them down, and, we, and when we... Uh, when we open up our hymnal, she opened up the hymnal to the page for the little doll. A little doll at the, at the dollar store is brightening a child. What do you think that child is going to think about Christianity? What do you think that child thinks about Christianity when people despise her family? You know, a lot of people say I'm crude and rude and on. They don't know behind the scenes. Verse number seven. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. I was like, well, what if you take that brethren? <coughs> Don't we call each other brothers and sisters in the Lord? Do you hate somebody in your church? Oh, I wouldn't say hate. Do you have anything to do with a family in church? I have seen it in church where I have heard. We don't associate with that family. 
No, I, no, no, no. Let me take that back. We don't associate with them people. Them people. I've heard it. In a church on my, you know, we're white. If a black family, black person comes, I will make lovingly, cheerfully, not because I, I'll try to go up and shake their hand and say, how you doing? Good to, good to have you here. Good to see you. Everything well? Anything I can help you? He's not poor, but I, I don't know. He could be poor. But put that hand out for everybody. But be careful who to, because when I say put that hand out for everybody, make sure that every, everybody's worthy of your hand. <laughs> because if you falsely give money to people who don't deserve it, <coughs> sorry, if they don't deserve that money, they're going to waste that money. In the back of your head, you believe they're going to waste that money. God's going to hold you that you didn't handle his money properly. You wasted it. And that man goes buys a pack of cigarettes. You paid for those cigarettes. You see, in the realm that we are in today, in America, you got to be careful. There are slick people. You know, there are... Someone told me, and I don't know what, maybe the homeless person. There are people who are living on the streets that get nothing that deserves. And there are people who are living on the street, they get everything and they don't deserve. That man on the street, uh, 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 why lie? I need a beer. And I've seen money, I've seen people take their money, roll down their windows, and throw it into whatever he, I forget what he has. That man that said, oh, why lie, I, I need drugs. He sits under a tree. I've seen people pull their car over, get out of their car, walk over to him, and throw money. He doesn't even go up to the car. I find it kind of hard, too, to give money to people. They're standing there with a sign, and right beside them is a restaurant saying, we need help. We're hiring. He said, well, maybe they got a physical... Okay, maybe they do, but they've been standing there for a month, for two months. Standing. I can't stand. I can't work for one of the restaurants. I can't stand. I don't stand for the song service, but when the pastor says, all right, can we stand and reverence the word of God? I will stand, but that's it. I'm done for it. My feet are okay. Nineteen seventeen. He that has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he gives Will he pay back? You help the poor, and God will help you. Now, today in the church age as a Christian, it's registered in the heavenly account. Don't expect, okay, I'm gonna go help the poor. I'm gonna get a month. I'm gonna get money. I'm gonna get blessings. I'm gonna. You're gonna get blessings, but you're not, or may not, get all the reaping here on this planet Earth. And then don't give because, oh, you know, God's going to, no, no, that's not the reason to give. But the Bible says God will reward you. It may be when you get to heaven. Here 22 says a poor man is better than a liar. Your politicians, 
some of your preachers rather have a poor man. That poor man in church may be better than your pastor who lies to you. That poor man that, that, that's, that's in your city might be a lot better than the politician you, you raise up. 2113. A couple more. Whosoever stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. Oh boy. I'm not going to help them. I'm not going to. God, I need help. No. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You don't want to help others. God says, I ain't going to help you. Last place, 22. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. How's that? Are you rich? God made you rich. Are you poor? God made you. Well, you know, they, they gambled and all that. Yeah, but God could have had number seven for them to win. Well, you know, rich, they work hard and all. Yeah, God could have given them a disability and lost it all. Donald Trump went, went bankrupt. Many times. A few times. Uh, three or four times, I think it was. His business. God allowed it. There are people who win these lotteries. And they get billions and uh, millions of dollars. And you find out about their life later, they're now homeless. They ain't got no dollars. God did that. You're not rich because you did. God made you rich. You're not poor because you didn't. God made you poor. Let's get that down. And if God made them poor and Jesus said the poor will always be with you, and the Bible, what we looked at, God will put poor people in your Christian life to see what you will do. And what God will do for you, what we read, is what you do for the poor people. 